delighted to be joined online by Key Cook and for our first of our new series, Mortal Kombat, the elite sort of franchises. We look ahead as we look back on some of the iconic moments of Mortal Kombat, the two Mortal Kombat films, with an eager anticipation with the release of the new Mortal Kombat movie early in 2021. And I'm delighted to be joined by one of the original stars uh, from the Mortal Kombat movies back in 1995, the one and only Keith Cook, who played the role of Reptile in the original Mortal Kombat and then also appeared in Mortal Kombat Annihilation as well, where he played the character as uh, Sub-Zero. I suppose, Keith, first of all, Mortal Kombat, I suppose in terms of video games, it's iconic, it's a legendary status. It's been there over 20, 25, 30 years in terms of consoles. In terms of comic books as well, it's legendary. It has so many comic books throughout the world. All the characters are known and revered, uh, and they're almost uh, iconic sort of figures as well. So Mortal Kombat, for a franchise that is still very much revel relevant 30 years on, it's sort of <laughs> very iconic, and you always are associated with Mortal Kombat. It'll always be part of you, and uh, is that how much of an honor is that for you? Oh, it's huge. I, I feel like, um, uh, you know, first of all, I think, it, I think it was a great name, Mortal Kombat, you know, and uh, I, I love that it was so successful as a, as a video game and it had martial arts, you know, it's, it's all, you know, is uh, built around the martial arts and having a very high skill of it and being a martial artist, you know, nothing could be better than that. Yeah, and I suppose, uh, Keith, uh, one thing that strikes me about Mortal Kombat, normally in terms of video games and types of movies, it's all centered around one or, one or two characters. But e every character in Mortal Kombat has such a vast backstory, uh, has such a vast sort of backstory and character to it, that everybody knows that there's so much room to play with. Even your own characters, as uh, Sub-Zero and Reptile, they have such a backstory through their great martial artists and great fighters but every sort of angle in Mortal Kombat there's so much potential <clears throat> and for a writer I suppose an actor as well it's a sort of a dream sort of scenario because there's so many directions and so many twists and turns uh, each each sort of character can take. I, I think that's what what really makes the the series work so well the you know the Mortal Kombat you know, just just it, it it's so built into a lot of the legends and the histories of the martial arts, you know, with ninjas and samurais and, and the Shaolin Temple and, you know, all these uh, legendary things. There's so much it's so uh, fruitful for the writers and mm. to, to be creative around uh, those kinds of characters. And I think that's what makes it so interesting. You know, yeah. I had a. I had a, I, I loved the going way back, you know, the, the David Carradine se series, um, um, Kung Fu, you know, they had, the, you know, a lot of those same kind of stories in there. And I suppose, Keith, you're world renowned as a, a martial artist as well. <laughs> and I suppose you would have gone in in terms of uh, in terms of performing all the, the stunts for your characters, in terms of performing all the fight scenes and moves. But when you first came around the scene and you were told you were going to be playing a character called Reptile, and he has all these actual special powers, these sort of you were trying to were you think when you were in this costume, how am I going to dawn these actual powers where he coughs up this sort of green sort of stuff or these green spitballs and how am I going to make that sort of realism while also trying to keep the sort of human aspect to it in terms of the martial arts because that's one thing that about these ninjas in Mortal Kombat it's a mixture of magic but there's also a mixture of the very humanized as well yeah and I think I think that was an interesting thing that they came up with of morphing into a human form you know mm -hmm. and then having to fight as sort of like a human, you know? Mm. And uh, I think that's, that's, that's always really interesting. You know, they, they put, uh, they give you special powers and they, they kind of take them away too mm. and, and make you fight, you know? Mm. And uh, I thought it was a really, uh, really cool the way the fight started with, you know, 
uh, reptile hiding out and, yeah. um, you know, anyway, Liu Kang senses him there and grabs him. And then that, that whole morph takes place. Yeah. And I suppose in, in terms of the mor morph of combat, how did you originally get involved in the, 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 the first movie? Uh, how did it come to your uh, a Pat Horizons, Keith? That, and when you, when you first heard about it, what was your immediate reaction? You would think, oh, this was a video game that they're trying to turn into a movie. And then you probably saw the plot and probably said, oh, that's a bit way out there. Is, is this going to be, is this going to get off the ground or? Um. Yeah, you know, I always thought it had a really good shot, you know, from the very beginning when I heard about it, uh, just because it, it was so strong as a video game. But, but like you said, too, there's so much opportunity for great characters in the movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, I loved how in the movie they, they had the boat, you know, mm -hmm. and it was it reminded me a little bit of Enter the Dragon going to a, you know, sort of mystical place and fighting. Um, but to address how I got this part was because I'm friends with uh, Robin Shu, okay. who, you know, who played Liu Kang. Yep. And we've been friends since probably around 1980 and had okay. trained together in the martial arts fairly a lot, actually. And so uh, they had completed the whole filming of the first movie and they decided they wanted more action. And that's when Robin called me and said, hey, I'd really like to do a fight, you know, against you where, where you play Reptile. And I was like, oh, man, this is going to be awesome. I was really excited. And they built sets in the Van Nuys Airport for that fight, for the Reptile fight, and then the Scorpion fight. Mm -hmm. Both of those two were shot after the, the whole movie was completed. Yeah, and I suppose, um, Keith, in terms of, uh, the first movie, you're sort of hidden behind that character in terms of the mask and the <clears> sort of ninja outfit. And in terms of uh, being able to, as a stuntsman, and being able to perform your moves, and is it, was it sort of a hindrance in terms of your vision, your peripheral vision, or the costume itself? Was it just mainly, <clears> was it light, or was it easy to work on being a martial artist, being a karate? It's all about a, a flexibility and movement. Was it any way a hindrance to you? The costume, yeah, was not. No, it was. It was very comfortable, lightweight. Um, it was basically like uh, tights, you know. And then that that thing that went over was just lightweight vinyl, hmm. and uh, looked, you know, it looked pretty good. You know, it looked pretty substantial, but it was very light, and it wasn't restricting at all. And in terms of those fight scenes, in terms of, uh, I imagine there were probably, you had to do multiple takes because you had to probably shoot them from so many different angles and so many camera angles. I suppose the one fight scene we see you with Robin Cho, Luke Kang, I suppose that probably took maybe days. Did it take three, four or five hours? Did it take two days to produce that or even more? We had, we had six days um, okay. shooting schedule. Uh, actually, but that improved, included some prep. I think we had some rehearsals before the six days. And then once that six days started, we got into the shooting. And, you know, for me, that was a huge luxury because the, the movies that I'd worked on previously, you never had that much time for, for rehearsal and shooting. And plus, I think that the director, Paul Anderson, had a really strong vision for what he wanted to get out of it. And he walked through with all the rehearsals and everything. And uh, also uh, stunt coordinator Jeff Imada was there. And then Robin and I were, you know, trying to participate too. And, uh, you know, Robin did, a, did a, put in a lot, you know. And so it was a collaboration. And I just think it was, it was really um, well thought out and well rehearsed and, executed well you know and i suppose keith what was your reaction i don't know the first time you probably maybe the live screening when you saw the movie back for the first time did you just <laughs> see your own individual parts or did you see the thing from uh top to bottom and what was your sort of initial reaction in terms of all the the fight scenes and uh, being a sort of an expert in martial arts <laughs> even the, the scenes that you weren't involved with were you sort of taken back all the way they were able to mesh uh, special effects 
in with karate and I suppose all the digitalization that had to be done for the movie as well. Well, I, you know, I, I was really pleasantly surprised. I thought, I thought the movie came out really well. And I was especially happy with our fight though, with the fight with Robin, the reptile fight. Um, you know, I just think it was, it was, uh, you know, it was well done. And um, I was really, I'm really proud of it to this day. I think it, it holds up well, even to this day. And there was, you know, there was very little, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, wires or anything like that yeah. like the bicycle kick had to be done you know in a special way but most of it was just regular going at it and we had some shots where we had where i had to jump off a trampoline you know to yeah. get high enough into a into a, a shot but you know for the most part i think <clears throat> i think one of the things you know i really appreciate robin a lot is he's he's a really tough guy and uh you know, on that scene, there's a place where I throw him and he hits one of the pieces of the set and yeah. it actually broke like three of his ribs. And okay. so he, he had to finish the rest of the time with broken ribs. And you would never would have known it. You know, you never would have known that he, he just kept going. And uh, but I love that about Robin and that he he will really suck it up to get it, you know, to get a good shot, you know. If he has to take a hit, he takes a hit, you know. Yeah. And, and I, I suppose, Keith, if I can bring you on to the second movie, uh, Mortal Kombat uh, Annihilation, and you played a character Sub-Zero, and this time we got to see your face and we got to see you uh, sort of uh, up close <clears throat> in the sort of movie. But I suppose the general reaction from the Mortal Kombat fan base or the universe, it was sort of started with a sort of shock in relation. I know Lyndon Ashby uh, couldn't be negotiated to come back on the sequel and the Johnny Cage character was killed off at the start of the movie. That sort of probably is upset an awful lot of the fan base and is upset, I suppose, an awful lot of the people, the sort of, the good sort of triumphs over evil aspect. They, they saw the evil winning from the start. It sort of, well, this is not supposed to happen and it sort of, it sort of turned off an awful lot of people, a lot of lot. But actually, when you look through the movie, the amount of characters that they were able to integrate in the movie was absolutely amazing. I suppose they integrated so many, but it's probably that aspect of the the Johnny Cage character, Lynn and Ashby, it's probably knocked it in terms of compared to the sequel where many people think the first movie had the original conspect that that was a bit maybe too too out there. Well, <clears throat> first, like to address the Lyndon Ashby part, I, I was disappointed that he wasn't in the second movie. I think that would have, I think it would have just really helped. I think he was a, such a well-established character. He's a really good actor. Hmm. You know, he was funny. You know, he was also, you know, he really cared about him, you know? Yeah. And so I really would have liked to have seen him in the second movie. I think it would have improved the, the second movie. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I suppose, Keith, in terms of the, the Sub-Zero character, uh, I suppose you watched the, the sort of first movie, so you probably had an idea uh, uh, going into the second, very much you probably had a thorough knowledge of what the character is. But again, I suppose Sub-Zero, uh, sort of a different character, we got to see the person and you, were, to, you could portray the character and the, the emotion of Sub-Zero. But again, I suppose the special effects in terms of that is, is Sub-Zero, you're dealing with water and you're dealing with ice, uh, uh, a very sort of different. How did that, did it differ anyway in terms of the fight scenes uh, with Sub-Zero compared to Reptile? Had you to sort of change around your normal routine uh, and re-challenge re re it in terms of uh, thinking, well, the Sub-Zero character is maybe a bit different, so I might need to tweak it in bits, bits and pieces. Yeah, definitely. And, um, also, it, it was it was different. One of the interesting things was, uh, do you know who Ray Park is? I've heard of him, yeah. Okay, so he was, uh, he played, what was it, The Frog in a movie? He was in a Star Wars movie playing yeah. that. Anyway, he is a really good martial artist, and I rehearsed that whole fight scene with him, even though he wasn't the one who was going to play it in the movie. J.J. Perry yeah. was actually going to play uh, Scorpion. And he was doing another part. He was playing C, C Rex or okay. uh, in, in, in the movie too. So uh, we were rehearsing it while he was playing that other character. 
So, uh, but they're both really tremendous martial artists. And there were some challenges with that, that bridge and stuff with the lighting, like the under portion of the bridge, mm. it was very shadowy uh, in there. So I felt like that part came out kind of hard to see a little yeah. bit. And I think I was a little disappointed in that. And the other thing is, you know, like you're, you're working out for these, rehearsing these fight scenes in a studio someplace on mats and, and everything is really, uh, you know, ideal situation for rehearsal. When you get on that bridge, that bridge had uh, salt poured mm -hmm. all over it. So it was like, it was like being in the sand. And yeah. so anytime you jumped, it was very slippery and your foot would sink into it. It was hard. It made it hard to jump and stuff like that. But um, other than that, you know, we got, we got an adequate amount of rehearsal and, uh, Ray Park, like I said, I just loved working with that guy. Um, and JJ Perry as well. They're both tremendous martial artists. Yeah, I suppose uh, we've seen Keith uh, in the last um, two years. There's been a, a sort of flood, a flood online in terms of new Mortal Kombat games being released and uh, new comics being released. And it's probably inevitably led to a new movie that's going to be coming out in 2021. I actually saw the trailer for the new movie myself. And they're probably, this time around, they're probably taking a, a modern day, 21st sort of century uh, look to Mortal Kombat in terms of it playing out in today's world uh, sort of angle to it. And I suppose you've seen both sides of the story. You've seen it, the, the today's world in the original movie, and then you saw it, the, the, the space world, the imaginary world in the second. Do you sort of like the idea of uh, going back to the modern sort of day world uh, with this and fighting out in the streets and the cities of the today? I do world? like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm excited to see it. You know, I haven't even seen the trailer yet. Uh, so I'll have to check that out. I didn't even know it was out. But uh, I'd love to see that. I'm looking forward to it. I even saw, you know, you know how they had that series yeah. online for a while. Yeah. Oh, yes. I thought that was, that was very cool, too. You know, yeah, I mean, it, it was just, very good. Yeah, it, uh, man, they came up with some interesting uh, creative ways of making these characters and it was it was it was pretty surprising and shocking to me but i i thought it was gritty i thought it was cool and yeah, so i, I hope saw, they have that in this i hope yeah. they have that grittiness you know i saw keith there recently there was a mortal kombat reunion as such i think it was in los angeles in 2018 i just saw a uh, four or five of the original uh cast there with chris kamasa and there was linda ashby and robin Shu, and yourself was there and uh in terms of these keeping in touch with people who starred in the original movies, there seems to be a sort of a great bond that Mark and Comet, because it's like James Bond uh, in one, many sense. Once you're involved, once you're part of the furniture, you're always going to be there and you're always going to be sort, sort of remembered. And there's also the possibilities of future cameos and guest appearances in movies and sequels down the line so it's almost like the once you're part of the family you're always there and the one thing about Mortal Kombat it seems is it'll never die even 20 or 30 years on and maybe 10 or 12 years there's going to be more games and it looks like it's something that's going to run and run and run so that must be something that you're very proud of. It is and I, I feel really blessed that I was uh, you know lucky enough to be a part of it you know when it's gonna yeah it looks like it's gonna go on and on and it's just it's very cool it's an honor definitely to to be a part of it yeah i suppose lastly keith uh before i let you go uh in terms of being there and on the set and the old sort of martial art aspects and comparing and choreographing those sort of fight scenes was that probably one of the most fun you had ever on a set was it very enjoyable the sort of the, the aspect, I know sometimes human sort of movies were in trial, but this sort of alien human mashup type type of, is that very exciting for a mixed martial artist to play in terms of that? Because it sort of gives you that sort of fantasy world that you know ain't real, but you obviously as a, as a boy, as a kid, as you sort of, you dream these things of reality and you get to play out this sort of futuristic sort of world as a martial artist, something, I suppose, very off the norm that you wouldn't do every day in terms of scripting or filming for movies. It's probably one of its kind, I suppose. It's probably something you haven't 
never experienced since I imagine. Yeah, it, it's, it's true. And I, I think, uh, it, it, it's absolutely really exciting, you know, to see something of the quality of that movie, because I was used to making such so many low budget movies. Mm -hmm. And so to see this and to see it be as successful as it has, has been really exciting to me and, you know, a wonderful honor, like I said, yeah. Uh, on that note, Keith Cook, a pleasure talking to you in the first episode of Mortal Kombat, the franchise uh, series. Uh, we've been speaking to many guest stars of the Mortal Kombat movies now in the coming week or two. And uh, look forward. Thanks, Keith, for partaking in our, our, our series. And uh, a pleasure <clears throat> talking to you this evening uh, for playing your role in Reptile and the original Mortal Kombat movie in 1997, 1995, I mean, and in Mortal Kombat Annihilation, where you played Sub Zero in 1997. And Keith, <laughs> No doubt, there's there, there's always saying there, a trilogy uh, three is best served. You've done two, you only need the hat trick. So probably, uh, <laughs> you're if the call comes, I say you're good to go for the third one. I'm ready. Yeah, tell them I'm ready. <laughs> uh, Keith, pleasure. <laughs> Thank Take you care. So much. Thank you.